you got one more game with Tanner Mordecai. I'm just curious what you will remember, what he was able to provide, despite missing the three and a half games <coughs> this year. It's funny you bring that up because I tell Tanner every day that um, I wish I had him for three or four years. I don't think that we would have him for four. He'd probably be done in three, right? But So I am truly, you know, they say appreciate what you have. You got your family and those things, and obviously I do, but I am appreciating, I'm trying to uh, enjoy every day I got with him because I know that on Monday that'll be the last one. And I, I just appreciate him as a person. I appreciate him for the warrior that he is. The coaches throw that word around a lot, but he is one of the toughest quarterbacks I've ever coached from a mental standpoint and a physical standpoint. He's been that way since the day he got here. It's 100% sincerely who and what he is. That's what we were looking for in our quarterback, and we got it. Uh, the only regret I have is that he was injured. Um, as a starter, he was 6-2, and two, right? And we're going we're gonna to go into battle one more time here on, on Monday. What do you think you have in I mean, obviously, we are uh, very pleased with what Tyler has to offer. We wouldn't have brought him in, but um, you know, he's got uh, a lot of experience. Um, he's a mentally tough kid. He's very bright. Um, obviously, he's tall and rangy, and he can he can throw it all over the yard. He can make all the throws. So, um, and I watched him live. I mean, you know, Coach Fickle. I have learned working with him every day is huge on winners, right? And we all are. And he's he's a guy that has proven he can do that in the past. And he's a guy that I've actually watched live. And that carried some weight with me with regards to liking him because I've seen him do it against our defense two years in a row. I've seen him do it against the entire league that I coached in for four years. And I, and I know what he was competing against and I know how high, high level he was playing. And so I'm obviously thrilled to have him here in, in our quarterback room. When you mentioned that mental toughness, him having been through some struggles injury-wise, play up and down a little bit, does that maybe give you confidence that like, he's going to be able to push through if you know, things weren't to go his way a day or a week or something? Well, like that's a great question. If you look at anybody's history, they probably have an injury history. They probably have an adversity history. They probably have a bad game you know, here and there. And, and uh, for me, what I really most intrigued about with Tyler is how he's bounced back and handled all those situations. So everybody has all that in their background. Many don't handle it as well. He did and he does and it's just part of the, the mental part of it I think that is an asset that we're getting with him and uh, you know time will tell obviously he's got to come in he's got to do it and go compete with the rest of the guys and we'll see what happens. Phil, I imagine your first year in a new program anywhere is a learning experience to see you know, what works and what doesn't. I know you still have a game left here, but um, is there sort of a list in your mind about areas you feel like this offense can grow in to get to whatever that next level is in year two? No, no question. I think everybody, a head coach, an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, even a position guy with regards to the vision in their room, or the vision with your unit, or the vision with the team, you you have a you have a picture of what you think it can be, what you know it can be, what you've done with it before. the The trick is when you get somewhere, you really got to you got to melt that with the talent that you have. So you've got to let. I've always said this: you got to let the talent dictate the direction that you take the offense. We also have things that we want to improve on. Right? We want to improve the roster. We want to improve the, you know, every room that we have. We want to improve our technique. We're going to, we're improving every week schematically what we're doing. So I am. I am excited about this game coming up, and then I will be excited about taking uh, the next big step. And in year two, usually it's it's pretty good. And so, because you have so many people returning now that understand what it is we're doing. Is there anything specific that comes to your mind about? You know, the areas for growth or things you thought turned out to be more challenging this year for is going to next year? Not more challenging. I mean, you, I don't know that I've ever experienced as many injuries as we've had this year, and those are just excuses, but um, they were very impactful injuries, right? So I think going into the second year, I'm excited about knowing what the advantages of the second year are, and that's, you know, when we line up in spring ball, we've got eight guys in line that can turn around and tell the two young guys exactly why we're doing the drill, what we're doing, you know what I mean, how often we're doing, how fast we're doing it. That's 35 coaches that we didn't have last year. 
Right. And then the other thing is we're a lot closer from the get-go, from this whole process of uh, playing much more instinctively, which is what the entire offense is predicated on. And obviously going into year two, you, you do something for a year, you're better at it than you were when you first started. So those are the natural improvements and the natural benefits that you get from the second year. And then we'll address schematically and, and, and talent-wise and all that stuff when we get to spring ball. But before Chez went down, it felt like he was playing some of the best ball of his career and you know one of the guys that really benefited from you know all the offensive changes. Well, what does it just kind of mean to, to get him back for, for one more year? And, and what do you think he's capable of? You know, if he's able to be you know starting running back for really the first time in his collegiate career. So Chez, obviously, as we all know, is one of our most explosive players, this year. and um, and and he, he fits a system that creates some space. And so we're I mean, we're elated to have him back. Can't wait to see him back out on the field. Happy that he's returning. Uh, but not only does he bring the explosive play on the field, but I mean, he's, you know, he was heading towards being one of the, those two or three premier leaders on the offensive side before he got hurt. And I don't think uh, that will change this year. I think he's intending to be one of the leaders on our team. We're going to need him to be. And I, I think that's, you know, that's kind of where things are going right now. Which is. And then just, you know, what to say about him? Three major injuries in, in three seasons. And, you know, he just kind of keeps coming back. Well, I mean, you know, we talk about mental toughness all the time. Here's a guy that has been through a lot of adversity, and the only thing he says every time I talk to him is how excited he is to get back to 100% and get going. And, uh, you know, when you're a fighter like that, that's how you that's how you handle it. And so four times a charm is what I just said, and hopefully that's what happens. When we, when we mentioned explosive players, when we talked to you during the season, you mentioned having maybe an explosive guy on the outside and what it could do for the offense. Do you Have you added that? And, or is it something you still need to find, uh, perhaps, portal-wise? Uh, you know, we've made some additions to the roster, so those are obviously improvements, and we've done that in every room. I also think, though, in the receiver room, we're developing it because there's a lot of speed in the room. And so that's got to be coupled with, you know, some experience and some technique, you know, doing a better job of changing direction, those type of things. But the potential to be explosive exists in that room. And so I'm excited again about, you know, first we got to lock in and go make some plays here in the bowl game. And that's really the only focus. And then once that's over, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll delve into developing the rest of the room. So I'm not trying to skate your answer, but I'm really not focused on next year until we take care of the last chapter of this season. Jake Renfro is going to play in a game for the first time in two years. Yeah. Um, what does he add to this group? And just what is his talent level as a center? It's a position that, you know, maybe average fan doesn't necessarily understand what, what he brings. It's, it's a more diverse position than some people think just because of the mental part of it. You know, the, he's got to make a lot of calls. That's what we are just discussing over there. He's got to make a lot of calls. He's got to ID a lot of things. Um, and he really kind of sets the O-line right prior to every play. You know, and, and I think one of the things that the extended practices, you know, the the, uh, the added practices that we have for this game has given him an opportunity to kind of shake off some of the rust and, and ID some things that maybe didn't come so readily mid-season. And now he's repping every, every one group and he's getting the endurance aspect of it, he's getting the mental aspect of it. And then one of the things I'll tell you that he does an outstanding job of, he's as crisp a snapper you know, as I've been around in a while, he gets back there. And those things are, that seems like a little thing, but it's an asset. It helps us with the RPOs. It helps us the timing of the run game. Helps us get into our drop sooner. So that has been a, you know, that's been a pleasant surprise also with, with Jake. Tyler's not here yet, but have you maybe seen the reaction you wanted to out of the other guys in the quarterback room are going to be competing with him when he does get here? I've been pleased with the reaction. I mean, uh, they all slapped hands and said hello and they talk and, you know, when uh, we had Mabry up here and we had Tyler up here and they had football questions and the guys in the room answered them. You know, I mean, I, I think they just accept them as a part of our room. They, they know that's what's coming. You know, I, I think if you're made the right way and you play quarterback, you worry about your own development and you go compete on the field and you let your performance dictate what happens. I mean, that's, that, they don't have a choice. That's, that's the only thing they can do. One more here for Coach Longo. Where, where have you seen Nick Evers take some steps forward maybe this season? I know when we talked in the spring, the understanding the playbook and the offense as a whole is, uh, is 
next step? How have you seen that grow this year? All of it, really. I mean, he is, uh, he's, he's obviously an athlete. And he's been an athlete since the day he got here. So, and he can sling the ball. He, we wanted him to work on accuracy, the intermediate stuff, the the uh, the quick stuff, the deep stuff, and those are things that when we get to technique and rep and are away with him, he's gotten better at. We want to clean up technique, so we're still working on that. And then it's it's a forever improving process mentally. I would say that he is uh, much further along right now than he was in the spring. So progress is good with him so far.